Okie doke, new day. All the, well, there's still something there, but it's not gasoline, so I can start cutting these perches off and I'm gonna slide this diff up. So if I can get this thing lined up with my body, that will be my first mission. After that, I'm gonna move that motor back to where it's gotta go. And then I guess the next step is working on the floor so we can get this thing channeled down to where she's gotta go. So anyways, first step, make sure this frame's all leveled up and bust all these rivets off so I can uh, scoot this differential forward. Okay, so I got all the rivets out. Now I'll, I just gotta do my uh, shocks here because my dip is hanging on that. And then I'm gonna, whoops, then I'm gonna push this ahead just temporarily. I'm gonna put it on and clamp it or something just so I can put wheels on it and see how it looks. And then we can clean up the rails and kind of do our business after that. Burn them, bolt them in, whatever. I'll figure that out as soon as I, uh, yeah, get all this other junk undone. Move the diff, it's in place. I uh, just temporarily scabbed some bolts in just to see if my wheel alignment is right. So I'm basically gonna lower the body down now and see if we're on the money here or not. If not, if I gotta move it one way or the other.
Well, you can see the wheel is pretty, it's centered, but it's not looking right. It's got to scooch ahead another inch or two. For sure one inch. I might go till this thing's, yeah, probably about two more inches, I think. And then we'll uh, refit this and see how she looks. So I basically just bolted these back on. They were riveted, so I don't see the difference. I didn't bother welding it. Uh, took me a while to get all this stuff off. I was running the needle scaler on it just to get the worst of the scale off, then I can maybe try to wire brush it later and give it a coat of paint or something eventually. Uh, but it just flakes off the heavy rust. So anyway, so that's bolted in, that's bolted in. This should be pretty much where I want it to be. Uh, yeah, well, I'm going to drop it now and see. I don't mind this. I kind of quickly threw the running boards on. It's not too bad. Totally gonna widen up these fenders. Like it needs different wheels. I don't think the body's like square side to side yet, but it's pretty close. So you know, I'm probably gonna run like a steel wheel or do something. So these, it's close. If I have to, I'll widen these up as well. But I do want it lower. I mean, it looks good. But I wouldn't mind a little lower, uh, three, four inches. 
somewhere there. I think it would be nice. Give it a little lower than stock appearance, but 4x4, just a nice driver user truck. Just keep <laughs> going with that trend. But uh, I guess in here, a feller could make do with an electric fan mounting the rad here and stuff, but I don't know. I'm just a believer. I got to push the motor back, probably about four inches. Make everything, lots of room, put a mechanical fan, do kind of stuff like that. Because you'd have to put a pusher fan on, there's not really much, you, know, you can mount it ahead, I guess. I don't know, there's a lot of things a feller can do. But, I gotta muck around with that anyway, so I may as well move the motor back. This is not terrible. Like, everything's good. I just want a little lower. I'm not trying to make a low rider, I just don't want it to look like a jacked up truck either. Looks like a bit of a lowered stock truck, kind of what I'm going for. So, once they get the floors already hacked up, I can't remember if I explained this. My plan to do is these slats, because everything, the floors all got to get redone anyways. So I was going to take the slats out, sit them on top. So basically raise my floor up, whatever is needed from that should be enough. I think I'll be happy with that. So anyways, I guess the uh, next step is to raise this up. I'm going to move the motor back, get that set up, and then start figuring how to get all the schlats out of the, uh, the floor side of that truck so I can keep channeling it down a bit. And then uh, configure out these wheels to see if they're right or not. I know it looks a little close up into the front wheel arch, but that's kind of normal. This is actually back from what stock would have been. So this side's, like, they're, they're pretty close. But it's got a big wowie in this fender, because it's supposed to be out. And then the front's not crazy bad, but I'll widen the fenders up to cover everything so nobody, there's no splash, stuff like that. Out here, it's kind of frowned upon if your wheels stick out past the, uh, the fenders. That'll get you in a bunch of trouble. So, we'll cover it up. I probably should order a wiring harness for it. I'm going to do the old fuse box thing like I did on that 58. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to try to do a better way of explaining it this time. <laughs> and then I'm going to order a basic harness for the truck. I think the feller's plan originally with this one is he was going to use all the stock GM stuff. But it is just such a disaster. I just didn't want to go that route. So there's a few things I'm going to order. Because I'm not going to scab around with it. I'm going to pull all the wiring he's got in there. Because there's just a whole lot of weirdness stuff that I don't need. I'm going to try to use the HVAC though. That'd be nice. Um, I'm not, I don't have, and I don't think I'm going to use the traditional gauges. But I'm just going to probably do like I did on my other truck. I'll put a GPS speedo on the one side. And just some, some engine vitals on the other side. And then uh, we'll go from there. I'll probably change this column out because it's good for stuff I like with a floor shift, things like that. But I'll probably grab a column shift out of the shed, switch it out so I can uh, just do a regular column shift with the floor shifter if the transfer case bolts on from the other truck. I really hope it does. I don't want to deal with uh, trying to figure out that electric 4x4 thingamabob. The front diff, a guy can just get a mechanical actuator just to lock it, unlock it. Or maybe I can rig it up with a shifter. I don't know how that worked back in the day. I think it's vacuum. Unless these ones are electric. I don't know. Never even looked. Anyways, I'm going to lift this up. I think I'll start moving the motor back. I can deal with the transfer case thing later. And uh, probably while I'm doing that, I might just descale the whole frame. All I was using was just a, like one of these needle scalers. So it just knocks the heavy rust off while you're just kind of with air power. I don't know, works really good. I'm happy with it. Anyways, back to work. Well, she's been a few days. I haven't got around to doing anything. Uh, but I'm going to come back out. I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to get those studs out of the heads because they need to be done. 
And uh, I guess we're going to make those motor plates to move the motor back. It's kind of a super late start, so it's about a little after 10. So I'll see how far I get. I might only get the motor, the exhaust bolts done, but I don't know. I got to do a little bit of something to say I did some work today. So there's uh, lots of ways. Ow. Nice one. So there's lots of ways to deal with these problems of broken studs. You can see that one's like just buried in there. This one's like a win, so I can easily grab it with vice grips. I'm just going to put a nut on it so I can spin it off easy. For these ones, they're buried pretty deep. My trick is, well, it's not really my trick. I think everybody does it. Uh, but I weld the washer first. And then after, I can weld a nut over top of the washer and uh, spin it out while everything's warm. So, it's not really, it's not really much of a trick, but <laughs> maybe you haven't seen it, I don't know. Anyways, I'm gonna stab these out because I think I got two on this side and I'm not sure what I have on the other side, if there's two or three. But I'll get these ones out and uh, then I'll do the other side. We got the exhaust done so right now I've taken all the bolts out of these motor mounts and I'm gonna make a plate just to move the motor back uh, it's gonna be pretty straightforward I'm just gonna build a mount that bolts onto these two ways shuffles my whole motor up ahead a wee bit or back uh, this thing's probably not gonna work I'm gonna need to change out this drive shaft but for now I'll pop it back see what happens uh, I gotta change this transfer case yet anyways and I should have enough meat here to go back to three or four inches that I need uh, probably while I'm in there I might just rip and get rid of this thing altogether some of the lines are already broken and stuff but I'm not running the ABS with this setup so because well I have none of that <laughs> so anyways Let's pop this stuff. Well, I gotta get my engine crane out so I can at least put a chain on here and we can go start scooting this thing back. Okay, so my plan is gonna be pretty simple here. I am gonna base this on the fact I gotta move this mount back a couple inches. My measurement was like roughly three fingers. <laughs> <clears throat> so we have there. Let's find a tape measure. So if I'm on this edge, I'm gonna go it's roughly about two and a half inches is where I'm going to go. It's kind of a guesstimate, but shouldn't be too bad. Should be close enough. We're going to go move that motor mount back. Yay much. That should do. Whatever happens, that'll be good enough. I could maybe go more, but I'm not going to totally smash it back. So that one's there. This is going to get cut there. So, looks weird. That's going to be my new mount. So, I'm going to shear this off, punch all these holes, and uh, I got to make two of these. So right now, before I get too far involved, I'm doing a quick test fit to make sure that this plate fits. Because I don't want to go through all the effort and 
have this plate not work. <laughs> Cool. So this looks good. What I'm going to do now is weld some studs onto here so I can hold the motor mount to which to just push my motor back the few inches that I need. And hopefully it's right. If I screwed up, no big deal. I'll just punch some new holes. It's not the end of the world. We are going to get into our... So this is the driver's side. Oops, that was a little loud. No, passenger side. So... Pretty much, this is the plan. These should all bolt up nicely. Now we've just moved our motor ahead as far as we need. Good stuff. Let's do a quick tack weld on all of them. Then do the other side quick. There you go, super fancy, move your motor back plate. <laughs> Do one more, <clears throat> slam her in the car. Okie dokie, we got these in. So they're in, let's push the motor back two and a half inches. We've got our studs out. You may have seen this, it looks ugly. It was just because I had to move the car out for that photo shoot and stuff. So I just needed to be able to steer it. So it's not a permanent thing. Uh, well, I gotta put the bolts in there yet. The transmission or transfer case. Again, I'm swapping this one out for a manual one. Uh, it's moved back on the plate. I don't know, whatever, the two and a half. Like it's actually hanging off, but it's kind of just sitting there. So I'm gonna leave it for now, but I'm gonna make a plate that goes off of there so I can bolt this transmission onto. For now, I'm just gonna go do a test fit, drop the body down, make sure everything's still good. And then we'll keep testing to see how much lower I can go. I'd like to bring this body as low as I can and keep it four wheel drive. That's kind of my goal. So um, anyways. I'm gonna get those two bolts in on the other side and then I'm going to drop this body. So this worked out pretty much on the money where I was going for. It's pretty tight, it's almost a little too tight. Uh, but I'll deal with that because I just gotta make some room for this dipstick tube. I could cut the dipstick tube off, but I like to shove my motors as far back as I can. I could have come ahead a little bit, but I'd rather leave lots of room in the front, either run a mechanical fuel pump or do something, or a mechanical fan or something like that. Uh, I don't know. I may re-punch those. I don't know. I don't think I need to, though. We'll make it work. I don't know what's less work. <laughs> Redrilling those plates or just smashing that firewall in. I do like my motors as far back as I can go. I like to have as much room in front of them as you possibly can, so that's always nice. But because I want to bring this body down as much as I can, I might have to go against the, the general rule I like to do. But uh, yeah, I got lots of room everywhere. Hmm. Hum, hum, hum. Which should I do? Eh, I'll just cut that. I don't care. I can do a schwank in there. The heater box that's in here doesn't go anywhere near it, so I'll mark that off. I'm gonna do a really brutal cut, but at least the, I'll be happy with the motor being as far back as I can. It gives me lots of room to run the air cleaner, do all this kind of jazz, so. Yep, it's staying, it's good. So, I'm gonna raise it up, I'm gonna chop that out, and uh, 
guess the next step is to keep hacking away. We gotta, I gotta pull some of the stuff outside from inside the van, pull it out, and then uh, we can see how how low I can get this thing. How low can we go? I know it seems counterproductive, making a four x four, not having it kind of jacked up, but I want a a lower than stock looking truck, but just practical and usable for some feller. That would be the ideal setup for me. If it was mine anyway, or if, <laughs> if I was to keep it. Anyways, let's, uh, let's raise it up, hack that out. I'm gonna start working on the floors, get all those out, and uh, then we can see how low we can get this body on here. So I have this up now. My goal is to get all these braces out, but they do screw down to the floor and stuff, so my goal, my hope, is every bolt's gonna break when I loosen it. Because <laughs> I'm by myself, and I'm not gonna be able to uh, get all that stuff out. So, let's start. Well, well, it looks like you got a bunch of them off, which is telling me maybe these ones started spinning. I hope not. I'm actually just gonna tighten them and break every one. That's, that's my plan. Because you can figure something out after. Some of this is loose. But a lot of it is not. So let's get an impact and start breaking some stuff. That would make me very happy. <laughs> So that's done. We haven't touched that yet. You can see why I gotta lengthen that drive shaft yet. Uh, I still gotta chop out that firewall part. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to cut out this floor section to clear the transfer case and stuff. We got the whole floor gutted out of there. That was a bit of a, well, that kind of sucked, but <laughs> we got it out. Now, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do those two. Well, I'm gonna do the one thing first. I'll see where the floor sits. And then, uh, well, let's see how it fits. How low can we go? That's gonna be the question. I'm pretty sure that these springs are gonna start hitting into here. So I'm gonna have to start cutting those up, but let's see what it looks like first. Well, we are getting very close. Uh, things need to shuffle a little bit, but... Like I'm liking that. I'm gonna have to widen the fenders, but that's okay. Then at least the guy can run a bigger tire if they want. But I'd rather have it where there's not too much gap around the tire. We're kind of really tucking on the frame rail nice. So the back of the chassis now is the floor is going to be stepped up this high, so it's nothing crazy. So I like where the back's at. 
the front still needs more chopping. I think I wrecked some transmission lines and stuff like that. <laughs> oh well, it comes with the territory. Uh, this feather put in a nice tunnel, but I might have to cut her up a little bit just so I can get a little more room, but that's no big deal. And same here, because I can see just inside of here, stuff is starting to hit. So yeah, if you didn't know, these panels, the seats flip up and they have these cool compartments where you can store junk. So we're probably not going to use those <laughs> because I'm going to just murder everything out of the way to give myself lots of room to come down. I should have enough room in this section. It's just up here. I think I'm going to be hitting a few bits yet because it is tight now. So we keep going though. I will keep trimming till I get her about where I want. I think I want another well, it's dang close, eh? Maybe I'm just going to leave it at that. I'll raise the back up a little bit. I do have to clear because I know I did mush the transmission, uh, the pedals or the, the lines. So, yeah, hopefully they don't leak. Because I'm pretty sure they're going to suck the change. This needs to scooch back just a hair. As you can see by this opening. I like it a little more tighter up into the front. But I think I'm going to have to re-stretch these arc, the wheel wells, because I don't know, somebody did some weird stuff, so I don't know. I'll make something up. No big deal. These are okay, but they're... I don't think I can roll them and they're going to work, so... Yeah, maybe I'm going to go up just a hair a bit more. I'll bring it up a little bit to level things out. I really wouldn't mind bringing the front down a hair a bit more, though. But it's torsion bar, so I could just lower the front a little bit. Because you can see that frame. The oh, you can't see from there. From right here. The frame's a little thicker in the front, and then it kind of narrows out. So we're not perfectly square on there yet. I'd like to bring the front down to match the back, but... We'll do what we can do. And uh, make it work from there. Well, I think this is my compromise. So... You can always put stuff in to lower it. But overall, I think I've lowered it four inches more than it was. Only went through it because the floor was basically, it's buggered up, so... We got that all raised. We got to basically build a new floor. Not a big deal. Well, no, not really. Be a little spendy because, well, plywood's super expensive now. <laughs> But overall, we got an idea of what's going on here. There's plenty of room now under the tunnel, all that stuff. Well, what I call plenty of room. I'm still going to trim back the sides a little bit, but then I can build a hump in that center section and still use the understore floorage if a person wanted. Depending on the seats that I put in. Here it's pretty much as low as a feather can make it because it's the motor is just about touching under the battery box. So. Plenty of room for a rad. If we have to, we'll run an electric fan. So that's all good. Lots of clearance around our motor. So we just got to build that back part. So uh, I'm going to basically lift the van up. Or <laughs> I'm going to lift the panel up now. It's kind of sort of resting right now. But I'm going to see where we got to start making uh, some body mounts and stuff. Figuring out that stuff. All right. We are looking pretty good. Our mounts are pretty minimal now compared to those weird stacked up things that were going to be in here. Uh, see, those ones just, I don't know if you can see it, that is just hanging off the side there. So that's not bad. It's about the same business here. In the front is normal, just have to. See all the rad support? We're still gonna have to trim a whole bunch around there, but usually I come off this thing and I build something somewhere. I think there was some weird scabbed up stuff on the original front frame on this. Oh no, it was on the other truck. The other chassis. So I have to look at what that is done there. And then in the back I have something. And I don't really know. I think these were all just these bars across were really holding it down. 
other than this back section. To which I trimmed too much off, so I gotta make something, but that's not a biggie. Yeah. Trying to see what's all going. I mean, it's pretty good. Like, this is where the mount was, so I could make something off the bumper. I don't know yet. I'll keep going. I gotta make sure I get everything all squared up before I go nuts. So, I gotta do... I gotta do the shuffle, make sure the thing is all square left to right. Once that is good... Yeah, we'll make all the mounts. We'll have to figure out the fuel system. It's, uh... It's attached to these bars, but I think it's going to be sitting over the differential. Oh, this has got a little bit of pull on it, eh? <laughs> Banjo tight. We'll have to address that. That's not great. No biggie. No problem. And again, I got to do this transfer case. This is not, not bad. I'm going to open this up a little more, though. Because, like, none of this, there's room, there's plenty of room, but I want to seal off the inside from here, so I'm going to trim these open a little bit. This side's not too bad, but I'm going to still do things. Give me another inch or so of room everywhere. We still have to make our mount there. We seem to be pretty good. It's a little, now you can see that thing's hitting right there. Hopefully you can see. We'll find out. Oh, man, eh? The lighting is terrible on this side of the shop. I need him to get going so I can get my, <laughs> my junk back on that side. He could use this one, but I'm not comfortable using lifting a vehicle that heavy on this hoist. All right, well, let's start by uh, figuring out what we're going to make some mounts out of. All right, I got a game plan. I have a box full of old body mounts, so the best I can tell, they're uh, S10 mounts are what I'm going to use. So, they kind of look like this. They're smaller than the Silverado ones. So I'm going to repurpose the mounts that came off this chassis. So for those to fit into here, I'm going to have to do a whole a lot of cutting, but basically this mount's going to slip into there. Like this one will slip into here. I'm going to trim that other mount to fit up onto here nicely. To which then I can use the original, like the bottom part of this mount and bolt everything together. So to get what I got to do, I'm going to have to do like a crazy step into this thing. And uh, then I'll be able to burn it to the top of the frame and down the sides. So let's get going on that. Well, with my crappy lighting on this side, I basically have this mount tacked in. It needs a lot of work yet, but they're all situated where they need to be. I wish all the mounts were big like this because then I could trim them back nice, but... So I got those ones in. Uh, the whole middle section is going to be pretty much those slats. At the back, I just scabbingly just have a piece of plate tacked onto there to which I'm going to do a smaller mount up on top. Uh, so I have, those sides are like in right now, but just tacked in. I got to basically buzz them in, make some gussets. I got to do a whole bunch of stuff there, but I got to lift the body off to do that. So that'll be, that'll be next on the slate. So I guess the next stage is going to be to drop this, lift the body back off, do all those mounts. I'll have to somehow make up some kind of front cross member mount here yet. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'll figure that out as I go. But uh, for now, that's where we're at. So, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.